Okay, here we go then. The last race of the day, it's all to play for. Race two, it all comes down to the next 14 laps. And away they go. Now, and there's Darren spinning out as well. Darren, there's contact there, he's pushed Kieran wide. Oh, but he's gone off, what's going on? Shane's also there in the BMW. Oh, nearly loses it. Kieran's going to have to slow down. No, he's got too much. It's Josh here, and he is leading. This is fantastic for Josh. Oh, a bit of a love tap. And Josh, oh my God, who's going to take it? Oh, I think it's Darren. I think it's going to be Rob. Rob gets it. He's actually on the grass. This isn't good for Tom. And he's made the move. Look at that. Threw it over Rouge. Oh, that's Mike. Mike's gone off. sideways big time is it gonna be enough no Sam takes it and takes the title ahead of Tom welcome to the Fetcrest online touring car championship my name is Tom and as always I'll be your commentator you're currently looking at uh, Craig Kellett our current standings leader in the Nissan GTR for Elit Racing. We are here at Laguna Seca Raceway, so let's have a little look at the track itself and have a little look at the entry list. So we come all the way to the United States of America to race here at Laguna Seca Raceway, the 2.2 mile circuit. So there will be 17 laps for the guys to race. Big news in the entry list then, it's a much slimmer grid with only nine cars. In the teams, both Parker Racing and Elliot Racing are a car short. Unfortunately, Sam Parker and Rob Pellet were unable to attend. So that meant that Darren and Craig would have to race just for one car for their teams. Tom and Kieran have turned up both for K-Tech Racing, so they'll be able to make up the points there. In the independents, Mock, Gary, Mike and Josh have all uh, turned up. But uh, Stephen Heath is our newcomer and he will be fielding another Subaru WRX in the Independence. Unfortunately, James Dawson in the BMW and Harry Cook were unable to attend, so we won't be seeing them. Let's have a little look at the points then for the current standings before we head into our race. Currently leading in the driver's title is Craig Kelly with 96 points. He is 10 points ahead of Darren. Mike is third with 80, uh, Sam Parker is fourth with 71, Mark has got 68, Harry has got 61, joint with Tom in seventh, uh, eighth is Josh with 58, Kieran is a point behind in ninth with 57, Rob has got uh, 46 in tenth, James has got 27 and Gary has got 23 so we will be able to see where Stephen puts himself after the three races. In the team's end, Parker is leading just by three points with 178 to 175 uh, to Elliott Racing. KTEC are quite a few points behind with 143. In the independence, Mike is leading uh, with 107 to Harry, so 12, 12 points ahead there. Harry is on 95, joint with Mark, but Harry won't be scoring today. Josh has got 72, a little way back, and Gary has 40 with James on 34 in 6th and then obviously Stephen will join at the end of the independence once we finish here at Laguna Seca. So the qualifying went ahead uh, and yet again Craig Kellett puts it on pole so let's have a little look at our grid for race 1. It's an all familiar pole position then for race 1 with Craig Kellett on the front row for Elliot Racing in the Nissan GTR. Next to him is a fantastic second place for newcomer uh, Stephen Heath in the independent run Subaru WRX. Row two is Tom Foster in the K-Tech Racing Subaru WRX. Next to him is Mark Nicholl in the Renault again. Row three is the only Parker Racing Darren Parker in the Renault again. Next to him is Mike Kuipers in the Nissan GTR. Row four is the brand new livery of uh, Josh Hardy in the Renault again, and another brand new livery of Gary Black in the Lexus RCF. And at the background of the grid is Kieran Thomas in the other K-Tech Racing. Subaru WRX. Here we go then, it's Laguna Seca Raceway, race number one. Craig on the front 
row of the grid with Stephen Heath and away they go that's a good start for Stephen behind Craig and they all go into the first few corners quite safely but there's a bit of contact there between Tom and Mark so on board with Tom and Tom's got that position but Mark has hit him from behind so that's pushed Tom off into the gravel and that's allowed Mark and Mike to go ahead of Tom but Mike nearly loses it on the outside of the gravel there so there's some early contact between Tom and Mark potentially the race stewards will look at that Tom on the inside of Mike here and Tom gets back up into fourth position now and Mike falls back so I wonder if Mike went off on the gravel as well here's the corkscrew and Tom's off in the gravel so Tom's struggling to get grips gets getting to grips with the style of circuit here on board with Josh who's just behind Kieran and Darren and Darren's been hit by Kieran so Kieran and Darren are already making contact as well so there's early contact between quite a few of the guys and that's Josh who's just getting the back end to kick out of that exit so that's allowed Gary to get out on the outside the two are fighting for fifth and sixth here with Mike potentially going on the inside but uh, Gary's got it but Josh goes back on the inside Gary goes wide Mike goes up on the inside of Gary and pushes Gary slightly wide so this is a uh, good racing and Josh goes wide so Josh is in the grapple and that's allowed Gary and Mike to get ahead Josh is racing in his brand new livery Renham again unfortunately not racing for Zeta anymore the two parted ways and Josh had just a small amount of time to find a new sponsorship deal with Endangered Gaming hence the new logo but a very familiar colour scheme but there we go Josh has now pushed Darren into the gravel and Josh slows down so it's the right move to make but uh, that's Darren being pushed all the way down to ninth now as Kieran gets ahead Kieran is racing with an injured foot this race and he unfortunately had an injury and has tried to look at ways of alternatively racing without having to use his foot so could be at a disadvantage here let's take a little look at this incident between Josh and Darren we're on board with Josh here and yeah Josh goes on the inside and unfortunately he's got made contact with uh, Darren and just continued to push spins him out into the gravel so Josh slows down to let Darren pass so further up Gary is in sixth Mike is in fifth Tom is now racing with Mark after their early contact on the first lap both Mark and Tom go over those curbs and that's Mark has gone wide so that's allowed Tom to get past Tom goes up to third and he's on his way to go and see if he can get past Stephen Heath who has made a really good start into his first debut race in the Feckrest touring car series so Craig is so far ahead it's unbelievable he just within a few laps onto lap four nearly on board with Heathy and as I said already Craig is just comfortably leading dominating here at Laguna it was seen in the practice in the qualifying his lap times were in the 119s when everyone else was in the 121s and 122s although Heathy and Darren were doing 
not too bad in the 120s. So it's spread out a little bit now. Tom's still in third. Mark is in fourth. Mike is having a race on his own. Gary down in sixth. So there's a bit of a race here now between Kieran and Darren. After Darren got spun out by both actually Kieran <laughs> and uh, Josh. Kieran making the most of the apex there trying to avoid those curbs and a lot of the guys have said in the practicing here that the curbs are really dangerous to hit and can really affect your racing line so and now behind Gary here And that's Mike. Oh, Mike goes wide, so Gary goes up to fifth ahead of Mike. And this is good for Gary, who really thought that the Lexus would be not great round Laguna here, and on the practicing, was struggling to get some good lap times. The Lexus not so nimble, a little bit weightier than the rest of the cars, but uh, quite a powerful engine. So, Mark is now behind Stephen, so Heathy has lost the position to Tom. And we actually have some footage of why Stephen has lost his position to Tom as uh, we've heard that he had a, a spin so let's have a little look at the spin of Heathy and see what happened to him let's have a little look and see what happened to Stephen Heath in the Subaru and I just hit those curbs ends up spinning around a great recovery though got it going but uh, lost those positions to Tom and to Mark let's take a, an onboard look at uh, Heafy here as you see he just hits the curb unsettles the car and he's lucky really see Tom there for him to not go into the path of Tom so really well done to recover from that Yep, so fortunately that uh, wild spin from Stephen has lost him that second position. Still a good third, but uh, that's his first real big mistake so far. So this fight is still carrying on between Gary and Mike. And with only nine cards on the grid, it's a, a slightly more spaced out circuit. So the battles aren't quite so close as they were at Nurburg, let's say. That's Mike going really wide. Wow, almost drifting around that corkscrew like a rallycross car. Great to watch. Can Mike get past Gary? Okay. Uh, on to lap seven as they come round the final bend. And this is not the first time we've seen Mike drifting round corners. Uh, but it kind of works because he's getting some great results so far and is doing really well this season. So Tom on his own don't think he's going to be able to catch Craig in the Nissan 
at this rate. Craig is still miles ahead and turn 120 laps in the 120s. So his race pace isn't quite as good as his qualifying pace, but it doesn't need to be when you've got a lead this big. On board of Josh at the back here. This is unusual for Josh and I think Josh is frustrated with his season so far. He's not got to the start that he has wanted after the confidence of winning the independence from season one. Uh, but he's got a lot more competition with new entries coming in each and every race. And we actually have two new more entries which are due potentially at Dragon Trail in a week's time. So we'll get to see them and they will be fighting in the independence although missing on the first few races will put them on the back foot for the points Darren racing on his own on his own now in seventh and uh, this is not great for Darren although he's on the hard tires get some points but uh, he's already been affected by it the contact on board with Gary let's have a little watch of Gary as he goes around the corkscrew in the rank in the uh, <laughs> in the ranksman in the Lexus that Lexus engine sounds fantastic to lap eight. Gary running a little bit wide there. So there's Mark in fourth on board with Stephen again as we watch him and there is Tom ahead. Can he catch him back up after that spin? Or is he playing it cautious after that for not hitting those curbs? And that's exactly what happens when you get the sausage curbs. The car lifts up and it just loses the grip. And it's so hard to recover from it. Subaru in a rather hot pink livery with the Union Jack on the top. It really stands out from the rest. It would look quite good next to the orange of Harry Cook when he returns. Hopefully next time. So there's a battle now between Mike and Gary, which has come back to play. So Gary must have made a mistake somewhere because Mike has caught up. So Mike has got the potential here to get past and get the points he needs as both Mark and Gary are in the independence. Gary's a little bit behind as he was unable to make the first race. Uh, but Mark is Mike, Mike's biggest contender at the moment. And Mark is gaining more points. So as the two come over the top of the brow of the hill. And both go through the corkscrew. We're on to lap 10. These guys are finishing lap 9. My 
like doing a a much tighter bend, bend uh, as we did see him drift around that last time. So a potential here for Mike to get past Gary. Further round, Mark is on his own, as is Heathy and Tom. And we've now got the leader, Craig, is catching up with Josh at the back. That is how fast Craig is around this circuit. So Craig will go on to lap 12 and we'll come round to lap Josh. Hopefully Josh will just move out of the way. As he does, Josh does the right thing. So Craig now having to get past the back markers. And this could slow him down a little bit, but not a worry to Craig as Tom is so far behind him and it's not a threat in any sense. Tom's got to get past the back markers as well, so eventually. Further down then, let's have a look at this battle here between Mark and Stephen. So Mark has caught up with Heafy. So he must have made another slight mistake or uh, or either Mark has just caught up and done well. Mark taking a great line through that corner there as they come over the top of the hill again. And Mark is looking very quick here. As he goes over the through the corkscrew. And Stephen potentially under threat here. And Mark could push to get that final podium position, which would be disappointing for Heafy on his debut to not get that podium, but still very, very promising. Only four laps left then as they go on to lap 13. We'll keep an eye on this fight at some point and see how that goes. Gary has got ahead, uh, made some space now ahead of Mike, so comfortably leading, and Mike has been able to take the advantage and uh, get past Gary. Further down, Darren is now in sixth, Kieran is in seventh, and Josh is in eighth. Oh, Josh has taken a spin. That's going on with Josh. So Josh coming out of the gravel there. So we can have a little look at the replay to see what's happened to Josh. Let's have a little look now. So let's have a little look at uh, Josh, who was behind Kieran, looking to get past him, potentially here. And he's just run wide into the gravel. And as he tries to recover, spins back round on board with Josh then I think it looks like he actually goes to follow Kieran into the corner catches the gravel and then he's just unsettled the car there and is unable to get it back up facing the right way in the end Yeah, so he just loses it on his own. Craig coming around for lap 14. Tom is in second. Uh, Mark is in third. So where is Heathy? There's Gary. He's in fourth. So there's nowhere to be seen for Stephen Heath. Mike is fifth. Darren is sixth. So yes. So Stephen Heath has retired. He's not even on the track. So must have had an issue. That's a big, big disappointment for Stephen Heath on his debut. Put it on second on the front row of the grid with Craig Kellett, 
who's <laughs> off on the gravel, but it doesn't matter because he's so far ahead. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, he feet, and that's Tom also coming off. Oh, and there's contact between Tom and Josh. Some of these cars are going through those corners wild as a, the back end of this race is approaching. So luckily Tom's not been affected by that spin. As I say, Stephen Heath will be gutted, absolutely gutted with that uh, retirement. Unfortunately, he will get a DNF, he'll get zero points after being just on the last podium position. But uh, we hope to see Stephen back in for race two to make up for the disappointment. See if he can get at least some points, salvage the damage. He'll be on the back row of the grid, but uh, we'll see what happens race two. But we are still a few laps away from finishing here at in race one so Mark he isn't too far behind Tom after Tom took that spin so I don't think it's quite going to be enough unless Tom makes another mistake but Mark goes off as well on the gravel, a lot of the guys are really finding it tough around here at Laguna. It's a tough circuit where the minute you make a mistake, it really is hard to come back from it. So, Mark, this is be a good podium for Mark, who struggled at uh, Nürburgring. And Mark took his first win at Monza. So, hoping to get back on it with the points and take the fight to Mike in the independence title. Gary still in fourth. I think Gary will be delighted with this after really not feeling the pace in that Lexus. Mike in fifth. I believe Mike is on the hard tyres. So his sixth is Darren. Seventh is Kieran. Don't forget Kieran is racing with his injured foot. So that's going to affect him all race weekend. So Craig goes over to take the entry into the final lap. Craig's been racing on his own other than going past the back marker. So really, it's been a lonely one for, Ga uh, for Gary, for Craig. <laughs> the two Supers here together here, Kieran and Tom. Obviously, Kieran's going to be overtaken by Tom. And being lapped. Again, another frustrating weekend so far for Kieran, who's just really not got uh, off the to a great start this season. Mark, this will be a good podium for him if he can stay here and. So, so Gary still in fourth he's actually got quite ahead of Mike now so Mike isn't going to threaten him for that uh, final podium position but coming across to take the win is Craig Kellett for Elite Racing in the Nissan GTR and to show you how far ahead he was here comes Tom rounds to take second position with still three corners to go two corners now sorry this is good for Tom he really needs to bag the points 
So Tom comes away to take second in the Subaru for KTEC Racing ahead of Mark who in, in the independent run Renault again is going to take third Josh will come across to take eighth a lap behind Gary in the Storm of Leicester run Lexus RCF will take fourth Mike is going to take fifth. Just ahead of Darren. There we go. Drifting again with Mike. So fifth will be taken by Mike. And sixth will be Darren for race one. Craig takes uh, yet another win then ahead of Tom in second, third is Mark, fourth is Gary, Mike is fifth, Darren is sixth, Kieran is seventh, ahead of Josh at the back with Stephen unfortunately not finishing after retiring during the race. So what that means for the drivers overall standings then, Craig is uh, still well ahead in the lead with 118, Darren is second still with 96, Mike is third with 91, Mark jumps up to 4th with 83, Tom also jumps up to 5th with 78, 6th is Sam with 71, 7th is Josh joint with Kieran with both 66, Harry is 9th with 61, Rob is 10th with 46, 11th is now Gary with 36, James is 12th with 27 and Stephen unfortunately doesn't score any points in 13. 13th with obviously Shane who still hasn't actually had a race yet. In the teams, Parker has been overtaken by Elliot yet again uh, by two points, 195 to Elliot to 193 to Parker and KTEC have made a considerable jump in third to 273 with having two cars turning up to the race. In the independence, Mike still is leading with 122, Mark goes back up to second with 115 ahead of Harry with 95, fourth is Josh with 85, fifth is Gary with 57, James is 34 in sixth ahead of Stephen and Shane who have yet to score.